Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and you already know what time it is. Ravnica Legion spoilers time, so let's start with Cavalcade of Calamity, which I just want to say that one more time. Cavalcade of Calamity. That's it, I'm starting a band called that. Does anybody know if Wedge plays drums? He looks like a drums kind of guy. So this is a two-cost enchantment in red. Whenever a creature you control with power one or less attacks, uh, this enchantment itself deals one damage to the player or planeswalker that creature is attacking. Now on paper, it looks like a great enabler for Rakdos' mechanic, Spectacle, but I mean, really, an attack power one or less? First of all, it's gonna die, and secondly, what would that possibly be in Rakdos? They're highly offensive, high attack creatures. So maybe it's for tokens, but then if it's tokens, like, why are you really playing Spectacle? So, I don't know, it doesn't seem that great. Next up, Clamor Shaman. It's a 3 cost 1-1 one, one Goblin Shaman because we needed more Trickster Goblins in the game. Thanks for that. Riot, so it could come out with 2 or with Haste. And whenever it attacks target creature and opponent controls camp block. Okay, this card is just absolute, complete, 110% certified AIDS. This camp block crap is so annoying and I would double down on saying that just because of Gruul and Rakdos. I hate this card. This is right up there with the Merfolk tap garbage. I, I'm just so sick of, oh, target creature can't block. Great, my giant 7-7 seven, seven I just brought out to stop you. Wonderful, thanks. Screw this pile of trash. Hopefully nobody plays it. Next up, we got Collision or Colossus. So with Collision, boy, this is just blurry as hell. Who leaked this? Seriously. Um, it's a two-cost hybrid with one being uh, generic, which is kind of interesting. Uh, it deals six damage to target creature with flying. So that's just straight up like plummet, but less reliable. So that's obviously the garbage weird obscure side. Uh, and on the right, we've got Colossus, which does require one of each mana, but it's only a two cost and it's also an instant. Target creature gets plus four, plus two in trample till end of turn. I love that artwork because it just represents plus four, plus two in trample really well. So yeah, this will utterly wreck people, but honestly, a better way to take down flyers is force fighting in most decks. So that new, like, souped up rabid bite that can hit planeswalkers, just a better card, but I mean, plus four, plus two in trample is like, no joke. So I don't know, I think people might play it. It's a fun little instant speed ambush. Uh, next up, Eyes Everywhere. That's just fantastic. Uh, it's a three cost enchantment and at the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. So that's absolutely amazing. I mean, I think we already gained one more effect like that uh, in Ravnica Allegiance, actually. Um, but yeah, free scry. It's it's Thassa, it's Sigiled Starfish. There you go. And then you can pay six, exchange control of eyes everywhere and target non-land permanent. So it's kind of like in Bolus's clutches, but mixed with like bamboozle. So that's kind of cool. Or wait, switcheroo. That's right, the deck I put it in was called Bamboozled. The spell is called Switcheroo. There's probably a card called Bamboozle. Anyway, uh, activate this ability the only time you cast a sorcery, because otherwise, oh my god. So if you haven't caught on, they get to scry then, but honestly, this could probably go in a Teferi deck. I mean, the Teferi deck's at about 600 cards at this point, with me saying, oh, that would go in a Teferi deck just from this set, but, you know, take your pick. That's the problem. It's going to get way worse. But outside of that, I mean, you could just never activate this ever, and it's still a really good card. It's basically just search for Azkanta, but not quite as good at all. But giving blue recurring scry so that they can get their stupid degenerate control spells and crap, like, up to the top of their deck, big mistake. I mean, I love the card because I play with cards like this and have in the past, but in the current meta, this is just bad. So next up we got Forbidding Spirits, a uh, three cost double white, so you know it's going to be totally baller. It's a 3-3 three, three Spirit Cleric, so it works with the Spirits deck, even though it's not flying. And when it enters the battlefield until your next turn, creatures can't attack you or a Planeswalker you control unless their controller pays two for each of those creatures. So it's a temporary uh, Baird and a like a temporary angel, or Archangel of Tithes. So this will buy you some time, but that's all it does. But then after that, it's a 3-3 three, three for 3 spirit. So, I mean, it's just good. It's just a good card. And once again, it's not just absolute shutdown, screw you, middle finger to your opponent. Like, settle the wreckage. This is just, I mean, if you want to pay two extra, burn some extra mana, you can still do what you're doing. I just made it a little bit harder. And that's why absolutes like Hexproof are way too far. That's why I really like that other creature that's just, uh, you can target me, but you got to pay two more. So it's not really hexproof, it's just, I'm a little slipperier. It shouldn't be all or nothing. They're, they're both, one is just, it gets blown away by literally any removal spell. And the other one is, no ability to spell in the entire game can directly do anything about this. Which is 
obviously ridiculously overkill. So subtle in between stuff, I like it. Just like that semi trample that we had a couple sets back where it's like, if this becomes blocked, it still deals one damage to you. Oh, okay, semi trample, cool. I hope they keep printing half mechanics like that because some of the mechanics in the game are way too powerful. Next up, it's a sheep. <laughs> Gatebreaker Ram. Sheep Tribal. I'm doing it. Let's go. So it's a 2-2 two, two for 3, but it gets plus 1, plus 1 for each gate you control. Eh, it's a little weak and slow for a gate stack. I mean, that's kind of funny, but as long as you control two or more gates, guess what? It has Vigilance and Trample. So, like, it was pathetic until they added that, but still... Like, early game when you have three mana, and, but then again, it's only uh, one green. And then it doesn't really matter what the other two are, so... I could see people doing a gate stack. I don't know if they'd, like, draft it. it. That actually would be pretty funny. I mean, you'd have to, like, draft the gates, though. <laughs> like, how bad would that be? I'm not sure the math would even support that because you'd end up with, like, almost no basic lands and you might not be able to build a 40-card deck. Well, without adding basic lands that you don't need. So, now I'm, now I'm thinking about that. But anyway, yeah, will this go in a gate stack? I don't know. I hope the gate stack never takes off. Five-color decks are just 100% cancer. Just like Jeff Hoogland is the cancer of the MTG streaming community. Grow up, you immature, whiny little man-child. Anyway, coming in from the movie Avatar, we've got Gateway Sneak. It's a 1-3 for 3, and whenever a gate enters the battlefield under control, this creature cannot be blocked this turn, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So I could actually see this. I almost wish it was like a 1-2 for 2. I could see this in a gate stack, because that's pretty good. Next up, Night of the Last Breath. Is this my last breath? Is this my last breath? It's a seven cost four four giant knight. Hey, history banalia synergy. And if you pay three, sacrifice another non-token creature. Okay, now they're not kidding. This is literally just supposed to work with history banalia. Create a one one white and black spirit creature token with flying afterlife three. So is it worth afterlife three for seven? Would you even get seven in a traditional either two color, three color spirit stack? Probably not. I don't think this will be very heavily played. Without a death trigger to go along with it, you're just basically targeting like a flying token to get another flying token in all likelihood. Unless I'm really missing some kind of combo, this just isn't a good card. Uh, next up, Macabre Mockery. I read that as Macabre Monkey the first time I looked at it and I am so disappointed. I can't even tell you. So anyway, this is a four cost instant in Rakdos colors and you put target creature card from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gets plus two and gains haste until end of turn. And then obviously, since this doesn't cost nearly enough mana, sacrifice it at the beginning of your next end step. Oh, pardon me, the next end step. And this is instant speed. So remember that. You could do this defensively. It wouldn't be the best use of the card, but I mean, it could save you and it could wreck their line. So, I mean, you never know. This is just a really good card. The thing is, for one more mana in mono black, you could just play Rise from the Grave, which is way better than this. Or you could just play both. I mean, whatever. Do like a sack kill, maybe even like a bolus deck like I did, sack and revive, because um, then you could do Entrancing Melody and all that crap. Let's do like self-sacrifice death triggers, um, active trees, and the other like five active trees and effects, and Grath, and maybe a little bit of front-loaded uh, discard or something, and you will just, like, wreck your opponent. I think that'll actually be a pretty big deck. Next up, Persistent Petitioners. I like Persistent Nightmares better. That card was amazing. Uh, so it's a 1-3 for 2 Human Advisor. So, hey, Advisor Tribal, get it done, guys. I want to see a deck list on my desk by 9 a.m. tomorrow. Go. So you pay one tap and target player puts the top card of their library into the graveyard. Yay, more mill, even though it's one card. And then if you tap four untapped advisors you control, oh, I can't imagine. I don't even want to read it. Oh, what does this say? I literally got my eyes closed. Target player puts the top 12 cards of their library into their graveyard. Okay, I thought it would just be like win the game or mill them down to two left or... Uh, oh my god, a deck can have any number of cards named... Just, 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 oh my god. Did they not learn their lesson from what game-ruining, gimmicky, immature douchebag playing trash that ruined Arena, it ruined Singleton, it ruined every event... I'm talking about that stupid Relentless Rats clone. Did they not learn from that? There are now four cards that I know of that can exceed the deck limit in every single format because what's written on the card just gets past the format. And then when they did that stupid special event in Arena, they banned like three cards up front. It was that automatic enters the battlefield and does damage thing. They, they banned three cards right off the bat. Just 
instantly, oh, these are gonna be a problem, bye-bye, ban them. I've got an idea, wizards, ban cards like this and the rats from Singleton, you idiots. Everybody wants you to do it. There is literally nobody in the entire game who wants rats to be legal in Singleton. Pull your heads out of your collective asses and ban it from everything that's not constructed. And then right when you're done with that, ban it from constructed because f*** you. Oh, this card just makes me sick. I can't believe this. You guys know what this really is, right? These sell for like 50 cents to a dollar. Any card that can exceed the rules sells for that much and you would probably put like 30 of these in a mill deck in like i don't know commander or like maybe even modern probably not i don't know they cost two and they're a one three highly defensive creature i mean the mana payment sucks but as soon as you start going 12 at a time it would be like a really slow like control heavy like gradual mill deck instead of just let's go numbers but this is just unbelievable. And anybody playing mill might actually build this. I mean, it's usually mill with tons of cover. The whole rest of the deck has to be like board wipes and settles and counter spells. So I'm not sure they'd be able to drop in enough of these to even get to four. And if they did, who cares? They would have won anyway. I mean, mill is a tier one deck right now. There's even Teferi mill and then Teferi list mill and then Nexus mill. There's like three different versions of the damn deck. So we didn't even need this, what is the point? So what they're trying to do is add value to the box by adding value to the common slot, which is virtually impossible, but when you take like, oh, people might need a four of and make it people might need a 50 of, it makes it a 50 cent card minimum, it just does. So they ruin the game, they ruin Arena, they ruin Singleton, they ruin everything, they even ruin Commander with garbage like this. And it's all just to make the box EV go up a couple dollars so that it, it can sell, they can sell a couple more and people open a couple more. Utterly ridiculous, disgusting. People get on Wizards on social media about this just disgusting disgrace of a card and anything else that says a deck can have any number of it. I'm just sick of this garbage. So next up, we got some crap in German, finally, because Germany comes in 12th place, apparently, in the country order in wokeness, because, you know, it's Germany. Ooh, look how multicultural we are with all different languages of spoilers, and we've got uh, contacts in every country. Uh, but Germany goes, like, 12th because they, they got white people there. So this probably says rally to battle. It's a four-cost instant, or <laughs> should I even try? Spontanzauber, maybe. And creatures you control gain plus one plus three until end of turn, untap those creatures. Uh, that's just honestly not good enough. Not for four, it's like, ooh, I blocked them one time. Just cast a fog or something. For four mana, cast a damn settle. This card's complete trash. Next up, Regenesis. Oh, this can't be good. It's a five cost instant green. Oh, good. Return up to two target permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. That'll be fun. I'd almost say we need a way to bring Carnage Tyrant back from the graveyard of some dick cleansing Novas it like three times because that happened to be on Arena twice today. But like Carnage Tyrant is complete AIDS too, so you know what? Maybe we don't. I mean, for five, you have to almost assume you'd already be losing the game. The only thing I could think of is maybe a Golgari deck where you accidentally toss something into the graveyard you didn't need or they blew up in, in Izona or you blew up in Izona by sacking it and then you need it back or something. I don't know. It, it seems kind of obscure, especially for five. Still, Graveyard Recursion ain't no joke. That's a good effect, so somebody might do something with it. You never know. Next up, apparently they got somebody to stop protesting long enough to leak a card in French. That's cool. So this is Repudier and Replicier. That was super accurate. I do love Ephemere, though. That's pretty funny. Or Rituel. <laughs> I bet that's not how you pronounce either of those. Uh, but so the left side is an instant, it's cause hybrid, cool. Counter target activated ability or triggered ability. Good, we needed that. L ever since Disallow was gone and everybody loves Void Slime, which was like 100 years ago, we needed this. See, the problem with an effect like this is it is not nearly good enough to main board, so they put it on a two-sided card. Freaking brilliant. Or split card, as everybody else calls it. <laughs> I'm tired, shut up. So on the right, we got a three cost sorcery and it says create a token that's a copy of creature you control. Oh my God, I'm playing this card. Another cloner. Are you kidding me? I'm just going to have an even bigger army of Carnage Tyrants. If you haven't seen my community tab, it's just me posting screenshots of Carnage Tyrants and going for a new world record for how many I can get out at the same time. Which, by the way, seven. Oh, my record on tender shoots is actually seven too. This card is insane. It's probably going to start at $5 and go higher. By the way, I love whatever that guy's wearing on the right. It's like some weird, like, Mr. Krabs cosplay. I am super feeling that. I think so far that is my favorite card in the entire set. Next up, Resolute Watchdog. I think this is my new favorite card in the set, just because it has a dog on it. 
Sorry, Mr. Krabs cosplayer. Doggos win every time. So this is a 1-3 defender for one, so that's cool. Those are actually pretty nice. And you can pay one, sacrifice it, and target creature you control gains indestructible until end of turn. So it's like Dauntless Bodyguard, but the defensive version, because, you know, Dauntless is a 2-1. So he's, like, there to hit. This one's there to hopefully not die, although it will die to a lightning strike. I will say, though, Dauntless is just at will, and this one you got to pay one. There is a damn big difference to that. So... I think people will probably just play Dauntless. But, I mean, if you're going to do, like, an angel heavy deck with, like, giant big flyers, maybe a Sphinx or two or some weird degenerate, you know, Azorius flying crap, you might just run both. I don't know. It's definitely an interesting card. It's not a hound. It's a dog. That hound, hound is an offensive term. Gee, why didn't they just make it mutt? I mean, come on. Seriously, really? By the way, it's not. I, I throw SJW parody hyperbole humor into all my videos, and it flies over everybody's head but seriously guys can we stop using the h word it's problematic there did i make that sarcastic enough people have literally written like books in the comment section you are doing exactly what the sjw's do that's the joke dumbass next up we've got zyken das watch postings which means uh stick a funny shaped post-it note on your forehead either that or sentinel's mark i'm not sure it, it's one of the two I, my german isn't that great Oh, by the way, Germany white people joke was an SJW parody joke too, just in case anybody's that stupid. So anyway, this is an enchantment aura, or as they call it, Versaberung or something. Why do I even try? They should just print cards in Dutch. It's way more fun. Uh, so anyway, uh, it has flash and it's enchant creature and it costs two, so that's cool. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus two in vigilance. So it's like uh, a little combat ambush for two, like a little instant little boosty boost, but you get to keep it. We really needed that in standard too. This is filling like so many holes for like just basic cards and basic mechanics and spell archetypes that we just didn't have, which makes sense because we had five sets legal. I mean, it is what it is. So this is awesome. I'm looking forward to it, except for the fact that the standard meta is going to be an absolute flipping joke until they, uh, oh God, probably ban three deck archetypes minimum. It's going to affect their sales. Like this set looks pretty nuts for multiple formats and it looks pretty competitive, but not against the decks that they just made hyper overpowered that were already tier two. And it is going to cost them money. Mark my words. So anyway, this does have addendum. So if you don't uh, do it as an ambush in the middle of combat, uh, you get lifelink until end of turn. So that's cool. I mean, they'll see it coming, but with plus one, plus two, who cares? So honestly, that vigilance part is nuts. I mean, this doesn't do anything to actually protect the creature. Uh, unless they're like trying to lightning strike it and you give it plus two toughness. I mean, that, that would be something. But after it's on the creature, you can't protect it, other than the fact that it now has higher toughness. So, if they just, like, Vraska's Contempted, they get a two for one, so that kind of sucks. But, eh, I mean, lifelink and vigilance with high defense and additional attack power, I like it. I'd play it. Next up, Sky Tether. That's right, they've hired a griffin to build the space elevator for the Ravnica space program. Oh, haven't you heard? Haven't you been following the lore? So, this is a one-cost enchantment or enchant creature. Enchanted creature has defender and loses flying... Okay, this card's flaming garbage even for a sideboard, but its significance is the fact that they think flying decks will be so toxic and so unbeatable and so good in the meta that they had to print an answer to it. That is really telling. Because I suspected white-blue boosted flyers is going to be nuts. White-black-blue, a.k.a. Esper, um... Uh, spirits is going to be nuts and those fly not that sky tether would really help you with a horde of spirits um and there was like a couple other like even mono white angels i thought might be able to take off so the fact that this is a thing worries me you know because i hate all flyers decks they're just it's cheap ghetto discount unreliable unblockable and anybody who thinks they're gonna get all cute playing an all flyers deck they usually just piss people off they sideboard the next week at fnm and then it never wins again or i should say they change their sideboards so next up, we got Sphinx of the Guild Pact. I do not get what's going on with that frame, other than the fact that it literally says it's all colors. So color identity is now in the frame, not to the left of the subtype. Even though it's, it's basically also just written out in words. That, that is real consistent. And then it's got a colorless actual background, even though it's not. That's super not confusing at all. Well, anyway, it's a 5-5 five, five for 7 with flying, so okay. And then, you know, it is all colors. Okay, whatever, who cares? I'm sure that'll be relevant in some weird, narrow thing. Um, <laughs> it's good luck putting it in your commander deck. Uh, but then it has hexproof a monocolored. If it was protection, I would have been kind of pissed, because that would have been ridiculous. See, what did I just say earlier in the video? Hexproof is too damn good. They need to make half hexproof, or just pay, pay more, or single-use hexproof, or just they need to tone down hexproof. It's bullshit. 
Well, here you go. Situational partial hex proof. Ta-da! At least somebody at Wizards appears to have some vague sense of knowing what they're doing. So is this good enough for 7? Honestly, probably, yeah, because most removal spells, in fact, basically all removal spells are monocolored. I can't think of one that's not. I'm sure there is one, but like Vraska's anything red, you know, fight with fire, spike, any of that. Well, spike wouldn't kill this, but you get it. Uh, not many planeswalkers would be stopped by this. Quite a few mixed color planeswalkers would be able to nuke this thing. But boy, for spells, there is just not much. Deafening Clarion wouldn't quite kill it. I don't know. I mean, you can't steal this. You can't kidnap it with Entrancing Melody. This thing is like everything proof. But the key is that technically it isn't. So anyway, what an interesting card to end on. That was the last one. Uh, we got, oh boy, I think like a hundred more spoilers to go or something. We're, we're not even like that far into it, to be perfectly honest. So watch for more spoilers, hit that subscribe button, or I will just break into your house at 4am and hit it for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next video.